Today we're going to solve the equation bracket x plus bracket 1 over x equals 1. And you might be wondering, what is bracket x? Well, bracket x is the decimal part of x. So for example, bracket 2.5 would be 0.5. Bracket pi would be pi minus 3, which would be like 0.14159, whatever. Bracket I don't know, two would be zero, right? There's no decimal part of two. Okay, so we wanna find all x that satisfy this equation. Try it on your own, or you could just watch me solve it. All right, so the first thing we should note is that x equals one is not a solution. Right, so if we tried bracket one plus bracket one over one, that's just zero plus zero, which is not equal to one. So x is not a solution. Sorry, x equals one is not a solution. So without loss of generality, we could assume that x is greater than one, meaning one over x would be less than one. Okay? And so we could write x as a integer n plus a decimal delta. So n is in z, and then delta is in 0, 1. Okay, so what we want to solve is n plus delta plus 1 over n plus delta is equal to 1. Okay, what's bracket n plus delta? That's just delta. What's the decimal part of one over n plus delta? Well, one over n plus delta is between zero and one, so itself is the decimal part. Okay, and we wanna solve this equation. So let's multiply everything by n plus delta. So delta squared plus n delta plus one equals n plus delta. And bringing everything to one side, we have delta squared plus delta times n minus one plus one minus n is equal to zero, right? And we know how to solve this. I know there's a lot of interesting letters going on, but this is just a quadratic. So we have delta is equal to negative n minus one plus or minus the square root of n minus one squared minus four times one times one minus n all over two. All right, and let's clean this up a bit. So this is negative n plus one plus or minus the square root of n squared minus 2n plus 1 minus 4 plus n. So plus 4n minus 4 all over 2. That's n squared minus, oh, sorry, plus 2n minus 3. All over and let's rewrite this as 1 minus n. Since delta is going to be positive, we're going to only take the plus part here. So delta is equal to 1 minus n plus root n squared plus 2n minus 3 all over 2. And so now the question is, for what n is this between zero and one. Okay, so for what n is zero less than one minus n plus root n squared plus two n minus three over two less than one. When we find those n's, those are going to be the values that we could use to, to get x. Okay, well, if n equals 1, what do we get? 
we get one minus one, that's zero, plus the square root of one plus two minus three. So it's zero. Zero is not less, is not greater than zero. So n does not equal one. Okay, what about n greater than one? Well, let's see what we have. We have this term here. So n is going to be greater than one. So this term here is greater than n squared, which is less than n plus one squared. Okay, so the square root is between n and n plus one. So this expression here is bounded between, well, if this square root is as small as possible, we would have one minus n plus n over two. So the smallest this could be is one half for any n greater than one. And the largest this could be is when this is n plus one. So it's one minus n plus n plus one over two. Two over two, which is one. Okay, so this for n greater than one is between zero and one, which is what we were hoping, right? Delta has to be between zero and one. So we could conclude that any x of the form, so for n greater than or equal to two, x equals n plus this guy here, one minus n plus the square root of n squared plus two n minus, three all over two is a solution to the equation we started with. So for example, if you wanna see like what one of the numbers looks like, um, if we used n equals two, that would give us x equals uh, two plus one minus two, so negative one plus root uh, four plus four minus three is five over two. Okay, uh, does this look familiar? It uh, could be written as x equals one plus uh, the golden ratio. There it is again, it appears all the time. Okay, and yeah, so for any value of n greater than or equal to two, so n equals three, n equals four, n equals five, and so forth, you'll get a different number that satisfies this equation. Let me know what you think. I thought this problem was pretty neat, so that's why I shared it. All right, see you later.